it's a four minute performance. After four minutes, the mic will go off automatically. Yeah. Uh, so, all the best to you. <coughs> <coughs> You know the uh, the evening uh, the uh, the rush hour in Bombay offers great amusement. Uh, if you are a beauty and if you perch yourself on a fly of, uh, on a sorry <coughs> on a foot of a bread, and uh, the, you see the huge uh, seething mass of humanity on the platform. It resembles, uh, so, uh, uh, to me it looks like uh, uh, those mindless creatures, mindless life forms often moving about, moving about with uh, seemingly no sense of direction. Uh, like those, uh, often resembling those uh, keyed toys, you know, you key them and they start prancing about. <clears throat> now, <coughs> this sheer mindlessness is even more evident when a train arrives and halts at the station. Given the fact it's the last station, and presumably the train halts for a good four to five minutes, people just pour out of the compartments, fall out of the compartments onto the platform like rodents, like rats, and they are carried away in boxes, you know, and dumped and disposed of at one place. <coughs> um, I'm sure most of you must have traveled by Air India. <laughs> I recently availed the uh, services of this uh, ailing airline. Come to think of it, <coughs> it's not just the airline that is ailing, it's even the air hostesses. In their late 50s, on the brink of retirement, and a plus 50 waistline, <coughs> enormous bellies blatantly exposed. <coughs> their saris bone so low that their entire attire resembles one of those Malayali porn actresses. Everyone, each one of them for me is a Shakila lookalike. <clears throat> a few more inches on those waistline and it can develop its own gravitational pull. You can toss in a few peaches and apples and wash them in an orbit around them. <clears throat> now, <coughs> now, this is a purely personal philosophy. Now, this one. I'm sure all men have had to endure this. You know, when uh, during under heated verbal exchanges, your woman briskly walks into the bedroom or the bathroom or for that matter any other room wherein she locks herself in and you are stranded outside bleeding. Honey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that. Can you open the door please? Can we talk about this? And obviously there is no reply from the other end. Now interestingly, women seem to practice this closed door routine if I may say so. Even on the phone, even when they are having a telephonic conversation, I'm sure most of you must have experienced it. You know, under similar verbal exchanges, they go to go to a silent mode, and you are left bleeding on the phone. <coughs> Honey, I'm sorry. You there? Hello. Are you listening to me? And that is a lot. Now, unlike the actual scenario, this can get very annoying. Because the guy is at his wit's end. Because for him, it's a race against time as well as his patient. If he has a prepaid account. For Christ's sake, can you just talk to me at least? I've got seven minutes of talk time left. <clears throat> you know, men and women have diff their own personal concepts of uh, time. Although women take an appalling amount of time in grooming themselves, they are always punctual. Whereas, this is even more intriguing. Men on the other hand, they don't want to shave, they don't want to take a bath, they just want to put on their t-shirt, slide into those jeans, slip into those sneakers, and hop off. And they still manage to arrive, I must say, an hour later. I know this is an extremely, uh, inappropriate, unacceptable trait. Thank you.